Before we dive into the most dramatic part of this story, it's worth remembering who the protagonist is. The Opportunity Rover. It was built to last just 90 Martian days, 90 souls, and yet it pushed on for years and years, skating on thin ice on a cold, dusty, unpredictable planet. By the time we reach the stretch we're revisiting, the rover's internal calendar had already flipped through many pages. It landed in 2004, and in the segment that interests us, we're in 2014, with around 3,800 souls on the clock. It makes sense to ask, how does a solar-powered machine endure that long on Mars? The answer blends sharp engineering, patient strategy, and a good dose of luck, the kind that blows dust off the panels at just the right moment. But a decade of hard work doesn't come without consequences. The joints on the robotic arm began to behave like tired hinges. The flash memory started causing scares with crashes and reboots, and some instruments lost performance compared to the early months. Even so, long winters, treacherous dunes, and steep slopes were never enough to end the adventure. In that spirit of resilience, we catch up with opportunity on its way to the top of Cape Tribulation, a striking rise on the rim of Endeavor Crater, like climbing a mountain ridge to see the valley from above and decide the next steps. The reward came on Seoul 3,894, a panorama that made every centimeter climbed worth it. Endeavor is about 22 kilometers across and very old. Today, the floor inside is covered by dunes that look like frozen waves. What gives it away as a crater isn't the center, but the rim, highlighted against the vast flatness of Meridiani Planum. Right ahead lay the destination, with a name like a sporting challenge, Marathon Valley. The name was literal. Once the rover crossed that valley, it would have completed a marathon distance, taking 11 years to reach 42 kilometers, 26.2 miles, might sound small in a world obsessed with speed, but for a golf cart-sized explorer operating on another planet, it was a major achievement. On Earth, the team celebrated the milestone with a symbolic relay carrying a rover replica as they passed the kilometer 42 mark. Marathon Valley, though, wasn't just a line on an improvised odometer. There were scientific questions waiting there. Images taken from orbit suggested rocks with intriguing chemical histories, and that was enough to trigger curiosity. To descend, Opportunity tackled the steepest slope of its entire odyssey, 32 degrees, a stubborn ramp. The slope was so steep that dust on the solar panels slid down under gravity, as if someone had shaken the rover's roof. At the bottom, the first stop was a small crater, nicknamed Spirit of St. Louis, where rock outcrops were exposed, perfect targets for composition analyzing instruments. During this period, the flash memory acted up again. Engineers had identified a set of problematic cells and began isolating that region, which drastically cut the reboots, from several per day to something like one a month. Even so, the ghost of resets would pop up now and then, precisely when the team most needed stability. The definitive solution required courage, bypass flash entirely, and run operations using only RAM. The risk was clear. RAM is erased when power drops. If the rover powered down before transmitting data to Earth, anything not yet sent would be lost. It became a game of precision, timing, and steady nerves, pushing collection and communication windows to the limit. On the north side of Marathon Valley stands a ridge called Hinner's Point. To the south, another called Knudsen Ridge. On these slopes, the goal was clays, minerals that, in the distant past, point to the presence of liquid water. From high above, the MRO orbiter had already highlighted areas with enhanced colors indicating these minerals, and scientists wanted to confirm on the ground what space had hinted at. The rover found friable rocks that crumbled easily and chemical signatures different from the typical Meridiani neighborhood. The sampling continued, but at a different pace. The arms spectrometer, a battle-hardened veteran, no longer breathed like it did at the start. Measurements that once took minutes now demanded days, sometimes weeks. Add to that a temperamental computer, and it's easy to see why the valley crossing stretched well beyond a year. As opportunity moved toward more interior areas of endeavor, it got a rare treat. A dust devil, a small whirlwind, crossing the crater floor. 
Its sibling spirit had captured several of these in another region of Mars, but for opportunity they were rarer encounters. And here's a curious detail. These whirlwinds are thought to occasionally sweep dust off the solar panels, cleaning them and boosting power generation. A blessing when every watt is precious. Have you ever noticed how the same environment that makes things hard sometimes lends a hand? The next big science target lay farther south. A groove, a feature that from orbit looked carved by some kind of flow. Was it running water, melting ice, or the wind patiently sandblasting rock over ages? A valley like this had never been examined up close on Mars, which raised the anticipation for answers. Getting there required a carefully plotted route along the crater rim. The rover passed through a gate named Lewis and Clark Gap, descended via Bitterroot Valley, and reached a point called Spirit Mound. Along the way, it captured impressive panoramas of the ridges and the sea of dunes, covering much of Endeavor's interior, images that help piece together the region's geology like an open book. When Opportunity parked at Spirit Mound, the rover's log had passed 4,500 souls, about 12 Earth years, and, surprisingly, its overall health was good, with a comfortable generation of around 450 watts of solar power. Between drives, the plan included stops to photograph specific rocks and even measure argon concentration in the atmosphere. A reminder that this tireless traveler was doing science about both the ground and Mars's thin air. Repeating these atmospheric measurements over time helps us understand the seasons of that exotic climate. Then came September 2017, when the coveted objective was finally reached, Perseverance Valley. The valley's shape seemed to suggest a pathway carved by flow. The question was direct. What agent sculpted that channel? Liquid water, thawing ice, or the persistent work of wind? Opportunity observed alignments of small pebbles as if they had been dragged and deposited, a kind of natural paving that evokes the action of water. Expectations rose, but after months of inspections, the conclusion had to be cautious. There was no definitive proof to single out one culprit. Good science is like that. It prefers an honest we don't know yet, over rushing to a neat answer. In the middle of this investigation came a round number in the rover's story. 5,000 sols on the Martian surface. How to mark the date? With a self-portrait. For the first time, the rover captured its own full figure. The image came out blurry. The instrument used was the microscopic imager with fixed focus for very close targets, but the symbolism beat any imperfection. It was the veteran looking at itself as best it could in a Martian mirror. Shortly after, in June 2018, MRO detected the birth of a dust storm. That wasn't new. Mars lives with storms, and opportunity had weathered others. The difference was that this one began modestly and, within days, turned into a global monster like fire racing through dry straw. The team on Earth put the rover into an extreme power-saving mode. The numbers tell the story of the darkening. On June 3rd, the panels still delivered about 468 watts. On the 4th, they dropped to 345 watts. On the 6th, they plunged to 133 watts. Dust suspended in the air dimmed the sun in the rust-colored sky until it was almost a pale ghost. There's an index that helps visualize the drama, atmospheric opacity, called Tau. In the worst storm, the rover had previously faced in 2007, Tau reached 5.5, practically the limit of what it could tolerate. In 2018, Tau shot up to 10.8, nearly double. Even with operations reduced to the bare minimum, basically vital signs sent morning and evening, on June 12th. Opportunity slipped into continuous hibernation. The storm lasted for months. Each day under a dark sky reduced the odds of a wake-up on the other side. Three months later, as the dust began to settle, antennas on Earth started calling Opportunity again. By October, the sky was clear enough, but the silence persisted despite some 350 contact attempts. From November on, the plan was to hope for a wind cleaning to clear the panels and restore enough power to restart systems. The calls continued, over a thousand attempts by February. Nothing. Then came the hard decision, officially end the mission. Fifteen years of operations, or 5,352 souls, came to a close. Does it hurt? Yes. 
But the balance is undeniable. The rover did more than expected and opened the door to new questions. The legacy is vast, beyond recording temperature, tracking changes in the atmosphere, and even helping refine the planet's rotation rate. Opportunity nailed a crucial piece of the Martian puzzle. In the distant past, Mars sustained stable liquid water at the surface. Seas, lakes, environments where the chemistry needed for life had time to experiment. Today that might sound almost obvious, but there was a time when it was hotly debated. As the evidence piled up, jaws dropped. The dry planet was wetter than we imagined. Shortly before the final silence, the rover sent a panoramic mosaic of the spot where it stayed. A poetic line circled the world as if it were its farewell whisper. My battery is low and it's getting dark. It wasn't a literal message from the rover, but it captured the mood of the moment. The last scene, the sun blurred behind a curtain of dust, as if the planet itself were asking the lights to dim gently. More than photographs, what remained were memories that transcended technique and touched those who followed the journey. If you've come this far, you've just revisited an epic. From the 2004 landing to the goodbye after the 2018 storm, from the slopes of Cape Tribulation to the valley that took the name Perseverance, from the marathon completed in tiny steps to the curves of the gully that may have known running water. It might seem small, but every centimeter etched into the soil was distilled science, record after record, measurement after measurement. And the inevitable question arises, what else will we see when the next explorers, robots, and who knows, humans, turn their eyes to Endeavor Crater and push beyond? How many stories still sleep under that fine dust? Sometimes exploration isn't about machines, it's about what they spark in us. Opportunity crossed dust and silence to show that the right questions deserve years of patience, and that even when the answer doesn't come, the learning does. Every track left there is an invitation to the next bold step. If a solar-powered robot lasted that long, what's stopping us from going further? Maybe the greatest discovery is this. Our curiosity is more stubborn than the storm. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and share. It really helps the video reach more people and keeps the flame of exploration alive. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.